Okay, Leviticus 26, Leviticus chapter 26, and uh, while you're finding Leviticus 26, and if you're on the internet, there are two handouts this evening for this lesson. There's obviously the one normally that we're going to go through, and then there is a second one, and I just want to talk about these real quick because I'm borrowing these. You know how when you find something somebody does and you go, ooh, I like that, <laughs> Well, that's where we're at with this second one. Um, if you will look up in the left-hand corner of, of it, it'll say Shorewood Bible Church, Adult Bible Class, Revelation Survey, Alex Kurz. So that's where you know it came from. I left all that on there. Okay. Um, if you'll look at, you'll see uh, it's Israel's five courses of chastisement and, or judgment. That's what we're going to be looking at. And then you'll see the Daniels, the 70th week there and then it says see handout two handout two is coming when we deal with Daniel okay just so you don't think I'm cheating you but um, I, I went through uh, some of Alex's uh, revelation study and this was the handout that they sent that I got with them but it's, it's good it's concise it's, it's going give, to give really a good overview I don't have to draw it up on the board and try to get you to squish and look through it okay yeah yes I'm on do you want the no the speakers aren't on but I'm on okay yes I started the start button yes because last week and this is all on the YouTube okay last week I forgot to push the mute button off I got everything else started but the mute button so I had to remake last week's study which was on the tabernacle so if you go to YouTube and you watch Lesson 14, you will see a whole different lesson than what you got Sunday night because you never teach the same thing twice the same way, okay? And actually, I gave you some more inf better information the second time around, better presented, so you got to go watch. <laughs> Drive up the YouTube numbers, okay? So anyway, if you're online and you're watching and you're watching by YouTube, uh, that's what's happening. I know I'm not in my shirt and tie that I normally am in. That's because I got lunch all over my shirt, and I'm in my Sunday or Wednesday night decor. Okay, so you'll uh, we'll, uh, you'll have to forgive me with all that. But anyway, Leviticus 26, if you will, we're going to look at uh, the five courses of judgment here. Uh, that's what I call them. The chastisements is the title that that Schofield has in his reference Bible. Um, and so forth, but chastisements, judgments, the same thing. And we have looked at several issues in Israel's history here, as in the book of Leviticus, we, we, in, in Exodus and Leviticus. We started in Exodus by looking at the Sabbath um, and, and what the Sabbath was all about, what it covered. Then we went and we looked at the Sabbaths, the plurality, the pluralness of them, and that was the feast schedule. And in that feast schedule, we looked at the Jehovah compound names where we saw the Jehovah-ness of everything. And, and we saw the Jehovah-whatever, the I am, you fill in the blank, and how they related to those seven, uh, seven feasts. Then last time, we went back into Exodus and we looked at the tabernacle and, and so forth. And actually, I got to use the blackboard in the remake because it was up and ready to go. So... Uh, it, it looks a little better when you can see it out than what I was trying to talk it out, okay? Um, and uh, we saw the issue in the tabernacle. We saw the, out, the, the structure. We saw the seven pieces of the furniture, wh where they were, wh what was going on with them. We saw the dress of the priest. Then we went over and we looked in Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of those five offerings that were to be offered. And the thing about those offerings that you have to remember is, well, you're in Leviticus. Hold on here. Go to chapter 1 again. Because in the week trying to get up here from work to remake it, I was thinking about what we looked at in the, these offerings. If you will look at verse number 2, Leviticus 1, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, if any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it 
of his own what? Voluntary will. At the door of the tabernacle, at the congregation of, before the Lord. Now, the door of the tabernacle, that's the brazen altar, that's the gate into the outer court. We saw that, okay? But I, what I want you to notice is it's of, of, of his voluntary will. And, and, and notice the ifs. If a man does this, if a man does that. In those five offerings, they, I, didn't, I don't want you to confuse them with the feast, the seven feasts. Passover, unleavened bread, uh, first fruits, uh, 50 day, day Pentecost, tab, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. Those feasts were, those were feasts of the Lord's. Those belonged to the Lord. These offerings, if someone in, in Israel's program, if someone broke the law, they were to immediately take the appropriate offering and go to the tabernacle and see the priest. They were not to wait to pass over Pentecost or tabernacles. They were to go immediately. So the, these offerings, when, when uh, Joseph and Mary take the Lord and they go up and they do a sacrifice and they take the, the poor man's offering, the turtle doves and the pigeons, and when, when you read that stuff, that isn't, uh, oh, well... It's that time of the year. It's a, it's a hey, we, need to, we have to do this Why? because we violated the law. What is that? So whatever the violation of the law was, there is always a, this is a sacrifice you're going to bring. Okay? And, 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 and you have to understand, I want you to understand, without doing a whole bunch of, re, of running verses through the law, is that these offerings were something very special that they were to bring on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or whenever they needed to. Now, if you think about who I like to call Joe Jew, <laughs> the believing, the everyday average guy who believes the Word of God, who's believing in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who he is who he is, he is Jehovah, that guy, guy's just like you and I. Okay, what are they doing? Well, if he breaks the law, what's he going to do? He's going to go and do the sacrifice. Think about David with Nathan when David sinned with Bathsheba. Nathan said what? He gave him that story about the guy who came and took the lamb, and he's going to repay how many? How how much? How much? Fourfold. Fourfold. He's gonna. You're gonna. He's gonna take. And, and David goes, yes, that's what the, that's what the law requires. And what did Nathan say? David, you're that guy. And David, what did David do? He fell down on his face, and he, and he requested uh, forgiveness from who, though? Not from Nathan, not from Bathsheba, he, from God. He went right against thee, and thee only have I sinned. What did David know? What was David listening to in Nathan? Hey, you're the sinner. And what do you need to do? You need to get it fixed. Now, David also had Bathsheba's husband killed. What happens to the murderer under the law? Blood for blood. Well, except what happened? Mercy came, God forgave him, and off. But why? Because David went and did what Nathan, his prophet, his priest said to go and do. Now, Solomon didn't do that. When Solomon messed up, he ran back to his wisdom rather than running back to God. So you have, you have that dichotomy there. Now all that's review and, and a heads up, because tonight I want to go and look one more time in the book of Leviticus, at Leviticus 26, and these five courses. Now there's something in Le with Leviticus that you need to understand, because you have Leviticus and then you have Numbers, and then you have Deuteronomy. But in Numbers, there's some things that happen, and we're not going to get into them too greatly, because they come out of Egypt, they go down, they cross the Red Sea, they go all the way up to Kadesh Barnea. They're ready to go into the land, and they send the spies in, and what do the spies say? Ten or no, two or yes, let's go. The ten say no, Joshua and who? Caleb, Caleb say, we can do it. He's a man of war. We can get her done. What did the Lord say? Nope. 
when this generation dies off, then you guys will go. And oh, by the way, Joseph and Caleb, you're going to go in. You'll live to see the day. That's happened. Who did I say? Joseph? Joshua. Okay? Joshua, Joseph, same guys. Come on. Same storyline, please. Okay? No? Oh, okay. Yeah. So w w that's what's happening here between Leviticus and Deuteronomy. In Leviticus, this information is coming to them prior to the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Because they, when they're in Kadesh Barnea and they don't go in, what do they do? We saw it with the temple, the tabernacle last time. When the cloud moved, it was time to move, right? When the cloud leaves, it's time to go. The cloud moved, and they left, and they go down. Deuteronomy 1 is, I, 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 this verse just fascinates me. Deuteronomy 1, verse 2. There are 11 days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. That's 11 day journey from where they were to get into the land, and it took them 38 years to get, do an 11 day journey. <laughs> that cracks me up. It's Gilligan's Island all over again. So what did they do? They wouldn't go in the land by faith, so God caused them to run in circles for 38 years. Okay? Now, Leviticus, the information in Leviticus happens prior to the 38 years in running around. In Deuteronomy, you, you'll see the five courses gone over again in Deuteronomy, but that is after they have 30, 40 years of experience of doing what? Going in circles. So you have this, you have, because we're, we're not going to really look in Deuteronomy because that's not my point, but if you go and read Deuteronomy 28 to the end, you see the five courses there. They show back up, but you see them going, you know, more information about them and so forth. And what I want to do this evening in the next 45 minutes with you is just get you the information. Here's where they're at. Here's where they're covering. Because when you study the Old Testament and you study Israel's program, it's important to know where you're at. We, when, we do the time, when we do the right division chart and we say in time past, what are the characteristics? Circumcision and uncircumcision, right? That's the main one. That's the big one. So when I read in Scripture where the circumcision and uncircumcision division is made, where do I know that I am? I'm in time past. Or I could be in the ages to come because in Hebrews through Revelation, what is the condition back to? That separation. So by reading what's going on here, guess what I can know? Where I'm at on the timeline. It's the same way in these five courses. Because when I read in Judges and Ruth and 1 Samuel, and well, Judges and Ruth specifically, what do I know? I know I'm in the first course. And when I move over here, and this is where that, this handout works for you just tremendously, and when I know I'm over in 1 Kings and following, that I'm in the second course, okay? So then I can understand what's happening in the life of the nation of Israel because of their spiritual condition. You think about the judges. That's the first course. What book comes out of the book? What, what book is written during the judges? Wonderful little four chapter book. Ruth. So even though spiritually Israel has no king and every man does what's right in his own eyes, there's still Ruth, a believing remnant, that's operating in that chaos. Okay? So you see the kinsman redeemer, you see Boaz, you see all that. And you go, wow, look, even in the midst of all of this judgment, there's still who there? The remnant of the believing remnant. Okay? So this, I hope this will help you. Uh, and, and, and to understand when, when you read the Old Testament, where am I? What's going on in Israel's history? Ah, first course. Oh, fifth course. Because that fifth course lasts a long time. Now, in Leviticus 26, the courses start in verse 14 and following. But you've got to read the first of it, the beginning of the chapter. Um, verse number 3. Uh, uh, really, it starts, the, obviously the chapter starts in verse 1, but if you look at verse 3, if, you, if ye walk in my statutes, 
and keep my commandments and do them. Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach. Verse 6, and I will give you peace in the land. Verse 7, and ye shall chase your enemies. Verse 8, and five of you shall chase, excuse me, a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And and by the way, the blessings just keep going down to verse 13, verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do, that next word is important, all. Not some of them, but all these things, these commandments, and if you shall despise my judgment, statutes, or if your soul adhere, uh, abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. Folks, when you read in Scripture where there is a famine going on in, Israel's, in Israel, the famine is there because they are not obeying the word of God. Okay? Whether it's a famine of food, famine of the womb they're not having children whatever when you read of calamity in israel's life the reason is is because they're not obeying the word of god that's what we're reading here if you do then what am i going to do to you i'm going to bless you to the abundance but if you don't you broke my covenant verse 16 i also will do this unto you now before we jump in, this is the first one. Before we do, jump in, we're talking about five courses here. And the courses that are going to come here because of their disobedience, it's because, verse 15, they break the covenant. But these courses are designed to teach. When you think about that word course, this morning we were talking about the course of this world. It's, 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 it's an education system. If you glance over to verse 23, and if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary. Reform. Th- these five courses of judgment or of chastisements that, that are going to come up against Israel are designed to teach Israel that they need the Messiah. They need Jehovah. And it's going to bring them back around again. Now, in the wilderness, when they come out of the Red Sea, he tests them five, gives them those five Jehovah tests there to prove them that he's their, 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 yeah, their everything. They fail them. They, fail, they don't go in. They do this. And again, more, ta- more training, more teaching. So the first course starts here in verse 16 and 17. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause uh, sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Hang on a second here. Verse 17. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies, that they hate you. I'm sorry, they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. (laughs) There's some things that are happening there in this first course. Actually, there's four things. There's physical illness. They're going to sow their seed out there in vain. The Gentiles are going to just destroy them. There's going to be military defeat. And then there, there's going to be that issue of uh, subjugation there where they're going to be ruled over. This is in the first course. By the way, what did he tell them they would have if, if, if they obeyed? Back up in verse 4, 5, and 6. They are going to have just the opposite of that, weren't they? <laughs> they were going to flourish. They were going to... No, you broke my covenant, so guess what? You ain't, you're not getting anything. Now, come over with me to the book of Judges because here is where... The first course starts. Now, what happens in Joshua, the book of Joshua? Uh, I'm Judges 2, okay? You have to understand some history here, because what in Leviticus, what Moses is doing, uh, doing here is he's laying out the history of Israel. 
This is what's going to happen to you guys. You don't want this to happen. You need to obey the commandments. But you're not. This is what's going to happen. And that's really what he says to them again in Deuteronomy with the new generation is, you guys are going to mess up just like your dads did. And this time, though, it's going to be worse. Judges chapter 2, verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them in the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Just like 16 and 17 said, Whither so they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them. There's Leviticus 26, 14 and 15. And they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them, and then you begin to read the, the, the cycle down to verse 19. By the way, each of these courses have prophets, has a prophet involved in it. In the first course, they have the judges, and they also have Samuel show up. And Samuel, he's the last judge, and he becomes the, the first of the, of the school of the prophets, of the seers, and he, he becomes the... Uh, the, the, the main guy, and he becomes their, their, their spokesperson from God. Now, come, go back to, to Leviticus 26, and you might as well stick something in because we're going to bounce back and forth, okay, um, a, as we go through these, because I want to try and give you where they start. At the end of 1 Samuel, what happens... Uh, well, go back to, to 26 real quick. Verse 18. And if ye will not yet for all this, what? Hearken unto me. Hearken, how? When the, he's got the prophets speaking to him, doesn't he? He's got the judges talking to him, and yet they won't do what? They won't listen. Now, let me say this, this, this first course here. It starts in Judges. It goes all the way to 1 Samuel 16. Do you know what happens in 1 Samuel 16? Do you know who shows up in 1 Samuel 15, 16? David does. David goes out and kills Goliath, 1 Samuel 16. David is the king, isn't he? So what happens at the end, let me put it up here, the first course starts with the judges, and it's going to run out here until David shows up. And then when David shows up, we have David, okay? That's the first course. Who else? And we have Solomon. So how long is that? Eighty years of a king and a kingdom. Then after that, what happens under Solomon? Jeroboam, Rehoboam rip the, rip the nation apart, don't they? That starts number two, Okay? Now, these courses are, uh, they, they stack on top of each other. They don't quit. You know how you know that? Because God still delivers Israel to their enemies, which is what he told them in number one. You're, you're going to lose, you know. As long as arms are up, we're winning. When they come down, we lose. That's in, that is uh, Joshua, okay, all right. So we have the first course run to David, Saul, then there's that interruption of 80 years of kingdom bliss, of Israel being who they're supposed to be under David and Solomon. And as soon as Solomon dies, what happens? Well, go back to Leviticus 26 and watch what happens. Verse 18, And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your what? power what did they do what did jeroboam and rehoboam do they ripped that power up didn't they solomon had them come and queen of sheba comes in and she says the whole has not been told we sing a song about that <laughs> okay. the whole of the of, of the of the of the awesomeness and the wealth and the splendor wasn't told they had the world come the world was literally eating out of their hand David did it by war. He's the man of war. He's the bloody man. Solomon takes that glory and walks it even in more. 
And yet, what happens at the end? You see, there's an 80-year break between verse 17 and 18. That's my point here, okay? Verse 8, 19, And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. Come over to 1 Kings chapter 17. So the second core starts, really starts in 1 Kings. Uh, uh, 2 Samuel, you have David and you have Solomon running the day. Okay, you get into... Um, I'm trying to get the first... Sam uh, where did I go? 2 Samuel. I need 1 Kings, that's what I need. 1 Kings 17... You have Jeroboam and Rehoboam finishing out their thing. What, ha what, did, what did 26 say? The heavens are going to be as what? As iron, right? The heavens going to be as iron, and you're eating as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain. Well, if the heavens are, 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 are iron, what does that mean? No rain. 1 Kings 17, verse 1. 1 Kings 17, 1, and Elijah... The tish by, by the way, Elijah, he just shows up. There's no announcing, there's no bringing him along. Wham, he's just right there. He's the prophet of the second course, is Elijah. And he shows up, and what does he say? Well, verse 1, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to, what? My word. Three and a half years, no rain. Why? why? Why was there no rain? They broke the covenant. They weren't operating and so forth. So we, you see Elijah, and he's the prophet here. And the second course runs through 1 Kings all, all the way down. Because who's next? Who shows up next? Well, come back to 26 of Leviticus. And on your way, by the way, get Deuteronomy 28. Let me show you this in Deuteronomy just so... You see it. Am I going too fast? I'm trying not to, but also being mindful of the clock. Deuteronomy 28, look at verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. There's the issue there, once again. Okay? So, when you come back to Leviticus 26... 18, 19, they intensify now. Now, not only are you going to have this, these physical issues and your enemies are going to be on, knocking on your door and I'm going to give them to you, but now you're not going to have any rain. Which is interesting because Paul tells the guys on Mars Hill that God didn't leave the world without a witness of himself, a testimony, because what did he do? He caused rain to come in their, in their seasons and, and the Gentiles were able to flourish under God's creation. And here, Israel has what? <laughs> they dropped the ball, no rain. Okay? Third course, verse 21. If ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me. You've got to hear the hearken. Why? Because Elijah, what does Elijah do? He goes in there to Baal, and he says, give them your best shot. And he stands up against Baal's prophets. And they dig the trenches. He waters it down. Baal gets out there. They're cutting on themselves. They're doing it. I love that. You know, Elijah today, who said, maybe his cell died. You know, his cell phone died. Maybe he didn't check his Facebook update, you know. But he's just digging them. Why? And then Elijah steps up and he says, hey, load that thing up. Get it damper than damp can be. And that fire bolt out of heaven comes and vroom. And he says, hey. Here's the real deal. And what did Israel do? They didn't hearken. So God says, okay, course number three, here it comes. And he says, you won't hearken to me. I will bring seven times, that next word, more. Again, these, these things build on each other. More. They don't go away. More. More. Plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, 
which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. Woo! Now, <laughs> what's he talking about there? Well, come over to 2 Kings and watch him do it. Chapter 2. Because who shows up after Elijah? Elisha, right? You're on the timeline, right? You got your timing, think, you got your thinking here. We start out. We have the judges and we have Samuel. We have 80 years of David and, and, and the kingdom. Bless. Those guys asked the question in Acts chapter number 1 about, hey, are you going to restore the kingdom again? They're, they understand what it is to have the kingdom and what it will be like. Then in, in, in course 2 runs out here, you have Elijah. Now we're in 3, and you're going to have Elisha, okay? And it's going to run into 4. So where, and by the way, where are we? We're in Judges through Samuel, right? Right? Then we go into the Kings, really, in the Kings. You see how we're just walking right through the Old Testament here? As you see their history. 2 Kings 2, here's Elisha. Elisha shows up, verse number 23. Uh, well, Elijah is, in, is translated in the first 11 verses. Verse 12, and Elisha saw it, and he cried. So he's there. Elisha steps up. Verse 19, he's going. Verse 20, bring me a new cur cruise. And, and he's, Elisha just picks right up where Elijah left off. Verse 23, here's the course. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And he was going up by the way. And there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. If you look back up at verse oh, 5, thank you. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy, what? Head today. And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. The bald head. Why, he's the head now. He's the, he's the main guy now. But what did they say? Go away, bald head. Go, go on. Get out of here. We don't want you. We, they're rejecting him. And he turned back, verse 24, and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. Well, what did Leviticus 26 say was going to happen? I'm going to bring some wild beast among you and I'm going to rob you of your children. It's interesting, by the way, it's forty-two how many months is the tribulation? 42 and 42. What's going to happen in the tribulation? In our Luke study, we're looking at the day of the Lord. What happens? There is a thinning of the crowd, isn't there? Remember, we looked at that passage the other night. There's seven women to one man. Why? War's going on. Shouldn't be that way. It should be a little tighter. It's usually about six to seven. Six women to, or six men to seven women. No, not, not out there. It's, why, there's a thinning of it. Go on up there, you bald head. Go on up there. And what happens? The wild beasts come out and they rip them apart. Okay? By the way, run over to Second Chronicles 36 real quick. Second Chronicles 36, verse 14. Well, verse 15. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he hath compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they, what? Mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. That's what's happening with Elijah and Elisha. Samuel didn't really have the, rip, the ridicule, except what did Samuel say? 
you don't want Saul, you need God's man, and that's David. And they said, no, give us Saul. And God said, give them Saul, Samuel, it's okay. Let them, they got to learn. So that third course runs with Elisha. Now, when you come back to Leviticus 26, because now we come to the fourth course. And the fourth course, again, the third runs the book of 2 Kings out to chapter 10. The fourth course starts in chapter 10 of 2 Kings, but I need you to read it in Leviticus 26. 26, 23. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, these three courses that I just put on you, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. This is getting worse and worse, isn't it? You know, we're seven times again. It's more, it's more, it's more. Verse 25, And I will bring a sword upon you, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered unto the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and and not be satisfied. Boy, that fourth course... That's a tough one. 2 Kings chapter 10. It starts in verse 32. In those days the Lord began to cut Israel short. Cut him off his knee, cut him off at the knee and call him shorty. Okay? What's he doing? We're in the fourth course. The fifth is coming. It's rolling now. And in 2 Kings You begin to see him do what? The enemy shows up at the door, and he's just cutting them down. You go through, if you're in 2 Kings, 2 Kings 10, you have Jehu show up. You have Joash. Joash becomes the king in chapter 11. Then you have uh, Jehosa uh, come show up. You got the priest mess. You got uh, chapter 13. You've got uh, Jehoahaz, you, you've got chapter 14, uh, Amazah. you got this war that's going to happen between Israel and Judah, the north against the south. you got all, you got all this stuff, you got Rehoboam, Jerry, you got all this stuff happening all over again until you come to chapter 16 and verse 20, and Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Hezekiah, his son, reigned. And said, you got all this turmoil until Hezekiah shows up, because Hezekiah was a great man. It was the men of Hezekiah that helped put together the books of, the, of Psalms and Proverbs and got all that stuff gathered. They were great men. They were mighty men. It's Hezekiah who gets at the end of his life, and he doesn't have an heir. And the seed line is down to just him, and the Lord fixes it so what it keeps going the seed line keeps going in his son so when you come into these this fourth course the fifth course will then begin in chapter 17 under hezekiah but you need to go back to leviticus 26 now what happens when it comes to the prophets in number four and number five is they become the writing prophets begin to get involved in these two courses okay that'll start where where are your writing prophets isaiah to malachi and they will begin especially isaiah jeremiah and ezekiel they'll start dealing with this first piece of the fifth course but they glad because hezek isaiah works under hezekiah isaiah is hezekiah's priest is his, I'm not his priest, his prophet, sorry, okay? So they begin to work in conjunction in, in number four and number five, okay? Now, the fifth course is the big one. If you go to, hold your place in Second Kings and go back to Leviticus 26. By the way, you notice that we're, we're in the king's, 
we're not in Chronicles, that's because Samuel and Kings are Israel's history from Israel's viewpoint, mankind. Okay? So this is Israel's or human viewpoint. Okay? First and Second Chronicles covers the same information, but it's from God's viewpoint. It's in Chronicles that you learn when Saul died that he was really the devil. In Kings and in, in Samuel and Kings, when they recorded, it, it was just a, a wonderful death of a king. Look at he was on the field fighting. God says, No, he was a devil. He's the devil. He's a beast. So when you when we talk about where we're when we're reading, you gotta remember, you want to understand human viewpoint. Boy, Kings is a great study of human viewpoint and, and of human philosophy and of human thinking and the human nature. So when we go across this line, that's why even on Alex's hand, you know, paper he made, we don't get into Chronicles. Why? Because Chronicles is just God's viewpoint of all this. And it isn't good. <laughs> we're going to see that in just a minute. We'll go over there and look, okay? So the fifth course, so we're still stuck in 2 Kings when the fifth course starts. Verse 27, Leviticus 26, 27. Okay? And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, they just don't get it. And by the way, what Moses is doing here is he's telling them, you are not going to get this. This is what's going to happen to you. Here's your history. Then I will walk contrary unto you also in what? Now mark that, note it, underline it, write it down, because that fifth course is a course of fury. That fifth course, when people talk about the day of the Lord, and they will say, well, that's just the 70th week, and it's just right here, and it's God's wrath in this back half of it, and so we're going to move the rapture over here to midweek, and we're going to do this and play games with that. They don't un What they don't understand, and... These are some good grace preacher guys, too. They don't understand that verse right there just shot that down because where are we when the 70th week happens? We're out. We're in glory. We're gone. We're not even here. But we're in what books? Hebrews through Revelation. Who belong to who? Israel. It's that, and that's the fifth part of the fifth course. And what? it's a course of fury. He's now pouring out his judgment. He's pouring some, some hot wrath out on them you know, compared to cold wrath before. You know? he's, he's pouring it out on them. Verse 29, You shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images, cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolations, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring you, I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lieth desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. And he goes on down. Well, verse 35, As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. You know what that means? They didn't understand what the Sabbath was all about. They had disregarded what was it all about. Stopping, chilling out, looking at what, why did God create creation why did he create us that place to dwell in they didn't let the land rest by the way every seven years they were to let the land sit and not do why because they had all this if you think about this they had all of this abundant harvest from the previous years because they were obeying the word what would they have in the storehouse lots of extra lay you know and it wasn't going to go bad because you told them it wouldn't go bad 
And on that seventh year, they let the land rest. And you know what they did? And they go, well, we got all this. We'll just keep going. Remember the parable in, in the Gospels about the, the guy who had the fields and he just built the bigger barns? Right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the idea here. Verse 37. Verse 36. And upon them that are left alive of you. See, see that left alive of you. What's he doing? He's pouring out his fury. He's cleaning their clock. I will send a, fat, uh, a faintness into their hearts, in the, in the lands of, of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. Boy, we've already heard that part, haven't we? There, yeah, he told, that's the second time he's told them that, isn't it? You're going to run when nobody's chasing you. Uh, can you imagine being scared of a shaking leaf? And they shall, verse 37, And they shall fall one upon another, as it were, be before a sword, when none per pursueth. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. What's going to happen in the fifth course? It's fury going to be poured out on them. The land's going to get rested. Why? Because they're going to be scattered among who? They're going to get scattered among the heathen. Now, come over with me to 2 Kings 17. Because 17.1 is where it starts. And it goes all the way over to chapter 25 of 2 Kings, which is obviously the end of the book, in verse... 30 okay but go to second kings 25 real quick with me and go back up in second kings 25 because in second kings 25 you have the siege on jerusalem okay and i just i just uh verse six second kings 25 six so they took the king and brought him up to the king of babylon who's the king of babylon Nebuchadnezzar. I'm sorry, 2 Kings 25, 6. Did I say that wrong? That's okay. Probably. <laughs> the king of Babylon is who? Nebuchadnezzar. What starts the fifth course of judgment? The captivity being scattered abroad under who? It starts with old Nebi, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? And he's going to go, verse, uh, well, verse 8. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came that guy, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he burnt the house of the Lord. What just happened? They're now gone, aren't they? Come over to Second Chronicles. 36. Watch it happen the way God looked at it. Woo! Now, with Nebuch Second Chronicles 36, who was carried off into Babylon? Well, we know Daniel was. Isaiah was left in the land. Jeremiah was left in the land. Jeremiah is going to prophesy about being off in captivity for 70 years. Daniel picks that up in Daniel 9 and says, okay, the 70 years are up. It's time to do what Leviticus 26 tells us to do. So he does that national confession, and God stops him and says, okay, Bubba, you're right. Land is ready, but the people are still dirty. So now we got 70 weeks of some things, 70 weeks of years that we're going to do to deal with the people, okay? Levit 2 Chronicles 36, watch what's happening here in this fifth course. You see, folks, the fifth course, it has five parts to it. Because politically, with underneath Nebuchadnezzar, politically, they fall. They're gone. They are no longer a, a political entity unto themselves. Now, they're always the nation of Israel. They're always God's people. They don't lose that they don't lose that spiritual issue until the stoning of Stephen in Acts 7, okay? 
So politically, they cannot walk in and demand. They don't have the power. And you see it in 2 Chronicles 36. Watch this happen. Look up at, chapter, at verse 5. 2 Chronicles 36, verse number 5. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple. That's the first siege of Jerusalem. And what did he just do to the king? He just carried him away. There's no way, well, wait a minute, stop. There's no sovereignty issue. You're mine now. Verse 8. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations were it's there. Verse 9. Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil. Imagine that, an eight-year-old doing this. Well, I imagine him. I got him on my bus. <laughs> okay. Verse 10. And when the year was expired... King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord made, uh, and made Zedekiah his brother king over Jeru Judah and Jerusalem. There's the second siege. You start in verse 11, you go to verse 21, there's the third siege unto Zedekiah. Okay? Now, hold on to here real quick and run to Daniel 1, just so you see what's happening here. Daniel 1, verse number 2. And watch where Daniel is hauled away. Daniel 1, verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. That's Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. With part of the vessels. See that? So where did Daniel go away? Daniel went away in the second siege. There's a third one after that. What is, what, what's happening here? Go back to 2 Chronicles 36. The Lord is doing what? He's, you're under the fifth course. You're no longer, you're done. You won't listen to me, so what am I doing? I'm scattering you abroad. Okay? Second Chronicles 36, 15. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messenger, and he just goes on, verse 18. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king, and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of God, and break down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the places thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. What did he say in Leviticus 26 was going to happen to him? Everything's going to be laid what? Waste. It's all done. Here's where it starts. Here's where they have issues. Verse 21, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah. Until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate, she keeps Sabbaths to fulfill three score and ten years. Seventy years are going to be off. Verse 22. What's going to happen? By the way, what's going to happen to them? Seventy years are going to be where? They're going to be in captivity, aren't they? So the first part of the fifth course, it starts with Nebuchadnezzar. And it's going to run 70 years, okay? Let me erase some of this and we'll just put this up here. So the fifth course, it's got some pieces to it. Because the fifth course, it's going to start with Nebuchadnezzar, okay? And it's going to run 70 years. Now, you're in 2 Chronicles 36, right? Daniel tells us the coming kings that are going to come behind Nebuchadnezzar, doesn't he, in his dream in chapter 2. And further information later in Daniel. Who's after Nebuchadnezzar? Who's after Babylon? The Medes and the Persians, right? I mean, you guys, you know this. Who's after the Medes and the Persians? Greece, right? Alexander the Great. It's split, busted up. Who's after Greece? Rome. And then there's the, the Antichrist in his kingdom, the little horn, out of the toes and all that stuff, right? 
But notice in 36, 22, many, many years before Cyrus ever shows up, here's his name. By the way, Cyrus is one of the seven men in the Bible named prior to birth. There's seven of them. Ooh, ooh. Verse 22, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he, might, that, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth have... The Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. Ezra 1, verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jer Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing saying and he repeats it what happens after the this is number one first phase get them off in captivity 70 years there's nothing in jerusalem the 70 years are up phase two we're now covering the books of ezra nehemiah and esther are we not and where are they going they're going back to rebuild the city and the tabernacle come over to chapter two of chapter two of Nehemiah, sorry. Chapter two. And I'm off my notes a little bit, but you'll understand why. Okay? Man. Chapter two. Verse number nine. Then I came to the governor's beyond the river and gave them the king's letters because Nehemiah's got letters to go and build. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. Verse 11, so I came to Jerusalem and was there three days and they began to build the city. According to Daniel chapter number 9 and verse 24 and following, this, well, I'll just run over there instead of me saying it you need to look at it daniel 9 what starts the 70 weeks daniel 9 verse 25 know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build what jerusalem there's that's nehemiah 2 1 to 8 1 to 9 what starts the 69 weeks Part two of course number five in the going forth to do what? To build Jerusalem. Notice it's not the temple. It's the city. Why? Because in order for the king to come, he's got to have a city to go to. It's time to get the city back. By the way, in all of this, go back to Second Chronicles 36, just so you don't miss this. Who allowed Ezra, Nehemiah, and those guys to go build the city? Who is Cyrus? He's a Gentile. He's a heathen. He's the king, isn't he? Okay? See, Israel doesn't bow up their back and say, No, wait a minute. We are the nation of Israel. Therefore, we will do what we want. No. No. The Gentile king said you can go. See that? 1948, Israel is created a nation by who? Who did that? The United Nations did that. I mean, you think, just look at the history. The Gentile United Nations says, okay, you can be, and oh, by the way, you can only be where we tell you you can be. You look at what's going on today over there. They're being dictated by Gentile. Why? Because that fifth course has been running a long time. Now, the body of Christ, the dispensation of grace, interrupts that course. Okay? Don't forget, I'm not saying they're still in the fifth course, but why did that happen? Because what has time immemorial been? We're going to tell 
the Israelites what to do. Okay? Starts back here. Part three, again, by the way, in Daniel's timeline, we'll see this. There's seven years, and then there's 62 years. Remember that? The cutting off and the 69th, and that's Calvary. Okay? In the seven years, you have them back in Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther trying to work and get, that, get the city built. Then you have what's next in your Old Testament. We're just trying to walk through the Old Testament now. What's next in your Old Testament? Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, then what? Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. There becomes the issue in part three, where now he turns and he deals with who? That little flock, the believing remnant, their heart, what's going to get them through, get them through, get them through, get them through. God's silent. After the writing, pro by the way, the writing prophets, come over to Jeremiah 11. Let's get, kind of get back on our handout here a little bit. And look at some of this. Jeremiah 11. You guys following how these are working? Again, they're building. They're stacking. And they're stacking you right through the Old Testament scriptures. Jeremiah 11, verse 1. The word, of the, Lord, the, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Ju Judea, I'm sorry, Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say thou that, and say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I command your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them according to all which I command you, and so, ye, so shall ye be, ye be my people, and I will be your God that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. As it is said, as it is this day, then answered I and said, So be it, O Lord. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Ju Ju uh, Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up uh, uh, out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day's arise early and protesting, saying, what? Obey my voice. There's Leviticus 26, the cycles. Verse 8, yet they obeyed not. So guess what's coming? Judgment. You know what Jeremiah is saying there? Guys, you're looking around, you're seeing this happening to Jerusalem and Judah. You know why? Because back there in Leviticus 26, I told them to obey me, and guess what your fathers didn't? They didn't obey. This is why this is happening. Because we're a few years removed from, from Moses in Leviticus 26 here. Okay, I say that facetiously, you understand that. Come over to Lamentation chapter 2. Jeremiah is now Jeremiah is in this siege work under number one under Nebuchadnezzar. That's where Jeremiah is. Lamentation to the laments of Jeremiah. Chapter two, verse sixteen. These are this is all in your handout back. We're back in the handout now. Two sixteen. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, We have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we look for. We have found. We have seen it. What are they do? You know what the whole goal of the satanic policy of evil against Israel was to do? It was to destroy her. And guess what? This is the day we got her. She's destroyed. Then the Lord hath done that which he hath devised. He hath fulfilled his word. Leviticus 26, 16. That he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pitied. And he hath ch caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thy adversary. Boy, they look around. You know what? Jeremiah is like, guys, what you see happening is Leviticus 26. And it looks like we've lost. Come over to Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14. By the way, the rest of those course, the rest of the phases of course number five, you, you, you see them, uh, and again, Alex laid it out so neatly, so we're using him. 
And uh, I know that he doesn't mind that. But you see that issue of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in Acts in part 4. Because what happens when the Lord shows up? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is now what? It's at hand. Because that fifth part of part 5, we haven't got there yet in Leviticus 26, that fifth part is what? That coming kingdom to be established. And we read about that in Hebrews through Revelation in that final day of the Lord event and that fury and that what all of this has been in pictures and dress rehearsals for that great day and event. Notice Ezekiel 14. You start in verse 12. The word of the Lord came again to me saying, Son of man, and again I remind you, when you read Ezekiel, he is called Son of Man. That's the title given to him. But when he says, the Son of Man, or the Son of Man, now he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't forget that the, okay? Uh, verse 13, Son of Man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, I'm sorry, yeah, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. That's an interesting uh, qualification of Noah, Job, and Daniel. At the end of the day, who were the only righteous in the group? Those three men. Noah was a, had the great, found grace in the eye. He was a preacher of righteousness. Job withstood that satanic attack. He didn't even know what was happening until God showed up and, and there at the end and talked to him. And what happened to Job? Because he stood, based upon who he was in Christ, and the doctrine and the information he had, he got it all back. That's why later on, what, is, what, is, what are the Peter and James and those guys, they remember the patience of Job. What did Daniel do? Daniel from day one says, we ain't eating the king's meat. Ain't going to happen, man. He became so high up in the government, he was, what, second in the land, I think because the kings were and the king's kids were all off but what did he do cyrus writes out the decree was it cyrus the decree about the daniel in the lion's den i think it was cyrus darius sorry i was one of the two <laughs> one out of two ain't bad darius thank you and what did what did, he said i know the decree i'm still going to do what i'm supposed to do and he went down and had a cat nap with with the lions okay he did. He just, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. What's he? They have righteousness. Verse 21, drop down. Thus, for thus saith the Lord God, how much more will I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem? The sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence. There's, here's the five courses in one verse. To cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters, and so on. You know what? Even though, guys, it's looking bad, guess what? There's still that little remnant, that believing element. Now come over to Amos. You guys doing okay? Because we're coming up on the hour here. Amos chapter 4. Because it, the, the, the little book of Amos, the minor prophets here, and they're only minor because they're little in size, and they, but they fill in details that the five majors kind of just let, leave the little blanks and they fill them in. Amos is written to the northern ten tribes as they are being carried off into Assyrian captivity. And in Amos 4... You have all five courses laid out for them. Amos 4, verse 1. Hear this word, ye, ye kin of Bashan, that, that are in the mountain of Samaria. They're, they're not in the right place. Okay? Which oppress the poor, which curse the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness, and he, and he lays them out again. Verse 6, here's the first cycle, the first course. And I also have given you cleanliness of teeth and all your cities and want of bread 
in all your places, yet have, I, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Verse, verse 7, this is the second course for, for time's sake. Verse 9 starts the third. Verse 10 starts the fourth. The fifth is in verse 11. Look at verse 12. Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he that formeth the mountains and createth the wind and declareth unto man what is his thought that maketh the morning darkness and it treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. Hear ye his, this word which I take up, up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. Verse 4, For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and what? Ye shall live. That's what they had to do. That's the piece now in Leviticus chapter 26 that we didn't get to. Go back to Leviticus 26. Hold on to Amos 5. Leviticus 26, we stopped reading at verse number 40. Okay, Leviticus 26, 40. What's going on here? What did he just say in Amos 5, 4? Seek ye me and ye shall live. If you drop down... Verse four, I'm in Amos 5, verse 6, Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. You run over to verse 15. There's a remnant of Joseph. You see that? Verse 16 and following, well, verse 18, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Get, look at that. There's the day of the Lord in the fifth course. Coming. That's Revelation, verse 19 and so forth. That's all Revelation 13, 14 and so forth. The conclusion of the fifth course happens in that coming deal out there. But real quick, run back to Leviticus 26 and verse number 40. Because there's something here you got to see as we wrap this up. At any time, if they had did verse number 40 and 41 and 42, the courses end. And if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which they trespassed against me and that also they have walked contrary unto me and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. Ooh, didn't Stephen call them that? they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham when I remember and I will remember the land. <coughs> what did Daniel do in Daniel 9? Seventy years are up. Captivity's done. National confession time. <laughs> and, <coughs> and he went at it. And Gabriel interrupted him and said, Daniel, we know that you're a man of God, and we're, we, you're, believe me, we are talking about you in the heaven. But you need to understand, we got more to do. Because the land's ready, but the people aren't. That issue of confession, when John the Baptist shows up in Matthew 3, what, what is he doing? What are they doing? They're confessing their sins down in Jordan, aren't they? Getting baptized. What, 1 John 1, confess your sin. Why do they... Why? Because it shows that heart of what? It shows that, that heart issue that Israel is missing all through this. In the, in the Gospels, even in our study in Luke, we've seen the issue there where God says, I would, but ye would not. And they're like, yeah, but we're the children of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And he goes, hey, don't think I can't make them rocks, the children, because you're really of the father, your devil. You guys have a spiritual issue that's that's just all out of whack. And you need to... We need to get that part fixed. Yes, you're my descendants. Yes, you can pull the rolls and show it. <coughs> but the issue is more than that. The issue is that spiritual issue. That's why in John 3, the, the born again thing comes up. What ha They've been born once as a nation, but spiritually they got to be born again. Okay? Where all that comes from is in these courses. The big one is the fifth course. 
The first four, again, they run you through up, up into Second Kings. And again, Chronicles just gives you God's viewpoint over the same detail. But then that fifth course, it starts, it's a course of fury. And they are scattered. James 1, 12 tribes what? Scattered. You go into the book of the Revelation and you read those seven messages to the seven church. They, actually, it's the angels that the messengers are out there doing. But it's to the churches that are scattered out there. It's not just to the seven, it's to all of them. Why? Because they're running for their lives. And, it's, and you see it in Acts 8. What do they do in Acts 8? Saul of Tarsus is out breathing threatenings and making havoc. And what are they doing? They, there's nobody in Jerusalem anymore but the twelve. And they're told they got to stay there. Don't you know they were wanting out? <laughs> you know, under lock and key. So you have all this, but when you study the Old Testament and you study Israel, where are we on the, on the timeline of the five courses? That'll tell you what's going on in, in Israel's spiritual condition. Because these five courses address their spiritual condition. And their spiritual condition is, is that they need help. So then what does he say? That's okay. I'm going to give you seven feasts that I'm going to take care of your problem. And I'm going to do it for you. And we've already seen the feast schedule. Okay? Whew. You did it. The stuff is important, and it's easier to do it all in one setting. I know it's a lot of information, but you can, you can go back, watch the tape, listen to the tape, whatever. But it's important to understand, because as we move now into the next issues and understanding Israel, when you go into the Gospels and you start studying the Gospels, and you, they ask Jesus Christ, what do you think about paying taxes? What's Christ say? Render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Who's on the tribute money? Why would he say such a thing? Because we're in the fifth course. And Rome is the ruler. He knows where he's at. And also he understands the trick question and <laughs> what's going on. But that, my point is, is when you read that, <coughs> so then when we look at Daniel and his timeline, it's important. Because now we know where we're at. By the way, on the thing here, there's a note that uh, the dispensation of grace is, is, is left out of that. <laughs> and, and there's a reason, because we're not there on the timeline, these five courses. It's up in the heading underneath the five course thing. We're not there. So you have to remember that. We interrupt between four and five. We interrupt those courses. That, that last, because what's waiting? We're out of the way. We're, we're raptured home. we are taken home. Boom. Here comes the Antichrist. Here it all rolls right back out. Okay? Very important. All right. Let me stop the tapes and see if you have any questions.